Here's a clue for today's video. Favourite pastimes include wandering the streets at night, chewing fences and rummaging through garbage. This could definitely describe Chainsaw Jim. But it can also describe an animal that you won't find in Britain. An animal that's native to the continent of North America. I'm talking about raccoons. I'm Lawrence Brown and this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Before moving to the United States I knew very little about raccoons. And actually they remain slightly elusive even now, which is why I've decided to make a video all about them. Throughout the next several minutes I'll be answering questions like Are raccoons friendly? Where can they be found? And are they as much a nuisance as Americans have led me to believe. This year my subscribers have heard me give the lowdown on other mysterious American creatures like coyotes, bald eagles and Chicagoans. And so for those of you not yet subscribed to this channel, do that now! In the meantime, let's take a look at an animal that the Quincy Gazette once called a canine rodent. The Quincy Gazette, a fictional newspaper that I invented for the purposes of exposition, has clearly been using AI to write its articles because the raccoon is neither a canine nor a rodent. In fact, it's a member of the Procyonid family, which also includes ringtails, olingos, and other giant rat impersonators. In addition to its comically bushy tail, it has remarkably dexterous paws, allowing it to grip anything from bin lids to discarded food. This defining feature is actually how it got its name. You see, the English word raccoon comes from the Algonquin word arakun, meaning he scratches with his hands. Furthermore, some indigenous tribes, like the Abenaki people of the northeastern woods, believed raccoons to be a lower level trickster spirit capable of the mischievous. Of course, their behaviour is not just confined to present day New England. Like bald eagles and coyotes, raccoons can be found in 49 of the 50 US states, with the only exception being Alaska. But Raccoons also show up in Central America, Mexico and Southern Canada. Yet beyond these borders you won't find them anywhere else in the world, at least that was true, until the 20th century. At that time North American raccoons ended up in three other regions. The fact that all three had at some point been major enemies of the United States is purely coincidental, I think. During the late 1920s various raccoon groups were introduced to the Soviet Union and it wasn't always a good thing. Many of these raccoon groups faced extirpation. Which is when a species goes extinct in one particular region but not in others. However, to this very day raccoons do still persist in southwest Russia where people often keep them as pets. And then there's the case of Germany. In 1945 not only would the country lose another world war but they'd soon be stuck with the largest raccoon population outside of North America. 25 imported raccoons escaped from a fur farm in the German state of Brandenburg after the farm was bombed in an air raid. And this partly led to a post-war baby boom of raccoons in not just Deutschland, but all of the countries surrounding it. In Germany today they number exactly 1.5 million approximately. And then there's Japan. While Japan had long been home to an unrelated raccoon dog called a tanuki, the country had never been inhabited by North American raccoons until the late 70s. At this time a phenomenon occurred in which hundreds of Japanese families suddenly began importing raccoons as pets. The cause of this phenomenon? A TV show. The anime series Araigamaru Sukaru, based on the American book and Disney film Rascal, was such a huge hit in Japan that fans wanted the real thing. And they got their way with the importation of thousands of North American raccoons. 30 years later, with raccoons now part of the Japanese wilderness, the animal was officially identified as an invasive species. So today the global range of North American raccoons looks like this. But in Britain, which is quite decidedly none of these countries, there are no raccoons. Which might lead you to ask, Lawrence, had you even heard of raccoons before moving to the United States? And the answer to that question is yes. As a child growing up in Britain my only insight into the curious world of the United States came in the form of entertainment. And one American film that occupied much of my time in 1988 was 1985's Back to the Future. You may remember that when Marty goes back in time to 1955 he finds himself in the childhood home of his mom Lorraine. What's that got to do with raccoons Lawrence? Oh nothing, just that Lorraine's little brother is wearing a dead raccoon on his head. <laughs> Now, as odd as that seemed at the time, I later learned that these so-called coonskin caps, made from actual raccoon fur, were especially popular among boys of the 1950s. And not just in the United States, the caps briefly reached the shores of Britain where Davy Crockett, the American TV show that popularised them, was a huge hit. More than 30 years later so too was another raccoon themed phenomenon. Around the time I discovered Back to the Future, Nintendo released the greatest platform video game ever made, Super Mario Bros. 
Brothers 3. I can't swear on it, but it's probable that this game introduced me to the word raccoon, for it was on that most Japanese of video games that Mario could turn into raccoon Mario. Proof that by then Japan was well into its raccoon era. And remember earlier when I said that Japan had long been home to an unrelated raccoon dog called a tanuki? The game also featured a tanuki suit for good measure. It was as if that three year period inherently contained some sort of cosmic significance. Almost as if it were the junction point of all my favourite raccoon references. And then I didn't think about them again for 20 more years. What I have thought about a lot since then is that Brits believe so many myths about Americans and vice versa. That's why 11 years ago I embarked on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. At first we were just a humble blog with a daily readership of seven. But as I heroically carried the weight of YouTube superstardom on my shoulders, my website itself became lost in the pond. Thankfully I've partnered with Squarespace to bring it back to life. Over the next several weeks we'll be revamping lostinthepond.com to make it the central hub for all things pond. And this includes blog posts, the first of which is now live on our new site. So go and read it in my voice. You can now sign up to our email list via the website, thanks to Squarespace's super simple button that has the word sign up on it. It's easy. But over time, we want lostinthepond.com to become a place where memos are kept and occasionally promises the other way around. Anyway, if you need a website to showcase your passions and or dreams, you can try Squarespace for free for 14 days. Get your free trial at squarespace.com today and once your website is ready for liftoff, go to squarespace.com slash lost in the pond and you'll save 10% on your first website or domain purchase. The link is in my description below. Anyway, 20 years was just enough time to outgrow my childhood wardrobe. Nonetheless, Super Mario 3 had had a profound effect on my perception of raccoons. The year I moved to the United States, I suddenly remembered that everybody worshipped the animal for its magnificent ability to hover. But this was not the vibe I got from most Americans. A freaking raccoon got in the trash again. I keep finding them in the toilet. Everywhere that I went, nobody seemed to like raccoons. In fact, I've yet to meet an American who does. That's why what I'm about to tell you might come as quite a shock. I have never actually seen one. A raccoon, not an American. I mean, all right, I have seen dead raccoons, which is a sadly common sight on Midwestern roads. Actually, it's estimated that the number of raccoons killed by motor vehicles in the US each year could be as high as 15 million. That seems made up. Either way, I've never seen a live one in the wild. Except for me, of course. Now, this is by no means the experience of most Midwesterners. Perhaps the places I've lived in just had very few raccoons within a square mile radius. But it is indicative of the sensibilities of raccoons, and their relative elusiveness might be attributed to two things. Number one, they are largely nocturnal, meaning those of us who can't be asked to leave the house after 8 pm have a reduced chance of seeing them. And number two, they are known to avoid humans, preferring instead to burrow in our waste. In a move one might expect of giant rats, raccoons have a well-earned reputation for ransacking people's trash cans in search of food. This is compounded by the fact that as a highly adaptable animal, many of them show up in cities and suburbs. And I get all of that. I just wish that Americans had have been more honest about something. How is it that in 2024, I'm only just learning that raccoons can f climb trees. Nothing can prepare me for this revelation, not even Mario 3 or vodka. In fact, something that I only learned this week is that raccoons are surprisingly proficient climbers in general. And, in addition to cosplaying as Ewoks, this prowess makes it easier for them to access not just America's trash cans, but its attics and other parts of houses. I keep finding them in the toilet. Now, I'm not saying it's time for America to re-evaluate its attitudes towards raccoons. After all, they do sometimes still attack us. This is especially true if the raccoon harbors babies rabies or wendy's but what i am saying is this north american raccoons are an enduringly fascinating creature here are some of my new favorite facts about them the latin name for raccoons is procyon lotor in which lotor means washer and as it happens this is quite apt because raccoons are actually known for washing their food before eating it unlike chainsaw jim this too explains why germans don't call it a raccoon but ein Waschbier, literally wash bear raccoon paws have often been compared to human hands that is if 
if somebody drew human hands from memory after, you know, four shots of tequila. Biologists suspect that the dark mask around a raccoon's eyes worked to enhance night vision by reducing glare. It's like they've never heard of infrared goggles. And outside of humans, raccoons don't face many threats. This, coupled with the fact that they're somehow just fine with American urban sprawl, means that their numbers have continued to surge. While some do think of raccoons as pets, others like to label them a pest. Well, I'd like to further that anagram by saying I consider them to be a step. As in... One small step for man. For Mario. The fantasist in me still believes that raccoons are amazing and can fly simply by thrashing around their tail. I am, however, aware that my thoughts on this might change if I ever do venture out after 8 pm. In the meantime, here's everything you need to know about North American coyotes. Continue your Lost in the Pond binge by watching that video next. Until the next time, goodbye.